Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Well, you ever wonder how the progression of jobs go? I can tell you. Starts out you're going to do one simple thing and that turns into 50 other things. When I planed down the door, I chunked up the blade on the number eight. When I went to put the number eight away, I decided, well, I really needed to sharpen it first because you never put away a broken tool. That way you don't have to try and fix it before you can use it. So I <laughs> opened up the drawer and the drawer wasn't working. So then I fixed the drawer. To do that, I had to get out all the tools that were in the drawer. So I end up with a pile of planes on top of the work or on top of the little workmate bench there. So here I am. I've got the drawer fixed, and I've also set myself up to uh, sell off a bunch of tools because I realized just how many I had. And now I'm getting back to the original concept of before I put this in the drawer, I want to sharpen it. So I got out the grinder put water in the little drip cup, and now we're going to do it. I'll show you how I grind out a nick. Fortunately, they're not very big, but still, you can't leave a nick in a blade. It puts a groove in everything you should, you're playing. And also, it's just not the right thing to do. Now, to remove the blade on a number eight, you just flip this up. Then you pick up on the blade itself and that removes it. Now I can see all kinds of little nicks right along the edge there. And that's disappointing. It's okay though. We'll fix that real quick here. You take off the chip breaker using a screwdriver. Now you're going to see people doing this, putting that in there and using it to take the screw out, but that's how you chip away the edge. Now this one's got a little chip in it. I don't think it's from removing the screw, but I've seen others with the center snapped right out of them or broken in half. Much better. Just take a screwdriver, set it on a solid surface and pop it loose. You don't have to take it completely out. Just slide it down like that and lift it off. I want to set the edge so I keep my bevel. Between 25 and 30 seems to work pretty good. Now I need to wet down the stone. I just lay the blade down, slide it up, Okay, I have the edge ground. All the little nicks are gone.
This is a little trick I use to help square up the blade. The back of this is square to the center line of the blade. So all I need to do is clamp this down and run it back and forth across the wheel while it's turning with that edge up against the tool rest. large quantity of water on the stone, it washes away all the swarf and also all of the slurry that is developed as the stone wears down. The sandstone is held together with clay and the clay and the sandstone grind away as the wheel turns, leaving a polishing compound on the surface of the stone. So we're going to just dampen it a little bit. We're going to let this wheel build up a slurry. That's an edge good enough for general work with a plane. We're going to take it with a set of water stones and take it down to a polish, just like it was originally when you saw the first videos of this. I'll let the stones soak up that water and I'll come down later and sharpen it. Because I had such a huge number of nicks, I had to grind it pretty deeply. And I like using this guide when I'm having to reshape the entire blade.
There we go. Because I left these stones soak overnight, they're very well hydrated. And they don't just soak up the water off the top of the stone, so that the water stays there. Which makes it a lot easier to do a good job. Now, it's not a necessity to have a plain blade shaving sharp. Actually, I found that if you take it up to 220 grit, that's more than enough to do most of the plain work that I do. But if you're going to go after the peak, then water stones are the way to go. This is a great user plane. It has several detractions from the collector's market. The three holes on the side are for a fence that was used to make it a, a really nice plane for shaving off the edge of doors and uh, trying to make long flat surfaces, which is the main point of having a number eight. The long plane body makes it so that it uh, does a much better job on long surfaces flattening them out and making them square. It also has what is known as a hang hole. People wanted to hang these up on their tool wall, get them up off the ground so that they didn't get rusty. So they would drill a hole in them and, and hang them over a nail. Doesn't affect the usability of the plane, but it really destroys it for the collector's market. People. Don't want to pay high dollar for a plane that's already got a bunch of cobbles on it. Now you want to have the bevel down so that when you put this together you 
you have just a little bit of plane blade showing. And then this is sometimes called the chip breaker or the cap iron or several things. Uh, the idea of the chip breaker is the chips have to curl so it makes them come out of the plane a little easier. And I've heard people say it is a good thing and it isn't a good thing to have the chip breaker real close to the edge. I keep it just about that close, about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe a three thirty second. Then we just put it back together again. Slide that down in. When the blade goes in, this little notch goes onto this. This little round disc goes into that groove. That lets you move the blade side to side and correct for any misalignment. This connects to this little lever arm here and allows you to adjust the plane blade in and out. Now we put this on and slide it down like that and latch it. That locks the plane blade in. You can still move it side to side but it doesn't do it just randomly on its own. Now I like to set the blade by sighting down the plane and since I've ground it and shortened the blade I now have to bring it out just a little bit so I can see the edge and then I want to take it back until I just barely see the edge above the plane surface. That lets me take a very fine shaving. And that is how you set a plane blade. Not a whole lot to it. Sharpening is fairly easy, especially with a big grinder. That wide wheel makes it so that you don't get the scallops and you don't have to have some special jig to hold the blade precisely in line with the stone. I like that the grindstone is almost the same width as the blade and I also like the water stones being exactly the same width as the blade so that I can have a nice straight edge on it works quite well. Now the other thing I do before I put this away I just crank that plane blade down so it's below the surface and I see people wiping their hand across the plane. Bad idea. If you're going to do that to th take off burrs or dust always go from back to front. If you come front to back you're gonna shave off your fingerprints especially after I've just spent the time making this razor sharp. Yeah, a little ball patch on my arm again. So that's how you sharpen a number eight plane and the same process goes for all of them. The others are a little easier because the blade is narrower, sharpens a lot faster and you don't have to worry so much about staying centered on the blade or staying centered on the stones. So that's the whole process. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching. This video is not to be viewed by anyone under the age of 13 in the U.S. or 16 in the European Union without the express written permission of the parents or legal guardians of the underage person. Such written permission must be on file at the local government entity in charge of enforcing the rules and regulations established by the FTC. Anyone violating these terms is admitting by default that they hold harmless the owners and operators of this channel. Any and all questions should be addressed to your local branch of the FTC.